Hello everyone and welcome to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. I have previously played Microsoft Flight Sim 4, Flight Sim 5, Flight Sim 98, Flight Sim 9, and Flight Sim 10 or FSX. And we have come a long way from 16 colors. Of course there are people who have predated me with the even earlier versions of Flight Sim, but I am excited. It has been a difficult install process. In fact, I have the Premium Deluxe Edition, but I can't actually get all the features of the Premium Deluxe Edition right now, apparently. Uh, so I have just uh, 20 planes. Uh, whenever I try to install the rest of it, it either freezes on Content Manager or, or crashes the game. But anyway, let's not talk about who killed who. <laughs> let's, let's try flight training. Um, let's try flight training because, you know... 30 years of flying flight sims is definitely not enough. I've set up my controls, I believe, as good as I need them, but let's see. Uh, this seems like a good way to start. I've done the flight training in the previous flight sims as well, just for the heck of it. So we'll get to take a look at Sedona, it looks like. I should have put track IR on, shoot. Well, anyway. I haven't tested it out yet, so. 6,400 feet is actually a very interesting uh, place to start uh, training when you think about it. Normally you would want to start people at sea level, but hey. Oh, okay, uh, we're in flight. Welcome to flight training. I'm your instructor, Captain Molina, but you can just call me Jess. This session, we'll get started with some basic controls. Sound good? Uh, okay, control first, space to reset the camera. Your surroundings. Don't worry. I've got the stick while you get your bearings. Slopes are still a problem, it looks like. Slopes have always been windows. a problem. You can see we have great visibility over Sedona today. Uh, control left. Oh. This is Red Rock territory. Beautiful, isn't it? Uh, translate. And we can save cameras. Control Alt 1. Pilot view. Control space. Hold S to there focus on Sedona Airport. On the airport. Well, that's convenient. That nice to have it up there. It's your turn. Time to fly this bird. The first control on our training list is the yoke. I still remember my first instructor saying the yoke is like a steering wheel. Almost. <laughs> sure, you can oh, okay. turn, but you can also pitch. Are you going to explain For pitch? Starters, it controls the ailerons. And the ailerons, they allow the plane to roll and bank into turns. Uh, do we have to reset the camera? The right. Okay, rolling to the right. Nice. That now was let's a sound. See you level back out. Wow, it has a aileron sound. Which is a really okay. rough sound. Of course, Can I trim the plane? The <laughs> I'm gonna trim the plane. And the elevator affects the plane's pitch, right? Pull back on the stick, the plane starts to climb. Give it a shot. The most valuable things in aviation are speed and altitude. But notice, when you're pitching up, your speed is decreasing. You could add more power. Or for now, let's just pitch down. Just like that, your speed's picking that up wasn't very gentle. and those pitches down. As you level back out, let's talk about another control. The rudders at your feet. Well, it's not at my feet. I've got a twist uh, joystick Rudder for the rudder right the now. Side side which is why also I tend to hesitate yaw. using the rudder because it's not quite, doesn't feel ground, quite the same. The pedals are going to steer the plane left or right. Up here, they properly align us during turns. Try them out and watch the plane's nose skew to either side. Not that. Using the rudder is ever a smooth thing, anyway. Simple enough, right? Before we go on, let's bring the plane back to straight up flight. 
Make sure your dashboard is aligned three to four inches below the horizon for a cruise attitude. Okay, the last thing we're gonna cover now is the throttle. I've already been if using it. If you have it. the need for speed, then the throttle's for you. Full control over the power output of the engine. Let's see what happens when you cut all the power. Surprise, surprise! Our altitude is decreasing. Okay, let's this get a good look around. Good Lots of trees. They ESA. said trillions of trees. Always keep an eye on your surroundings, because nobody likes a low-flying duck. You've left the training airspace. You need to go back. This might be a good time for a piloting PSA. Always keep an eye on your surroundings, because nobody likes a low. You've you left should... the training airspace. You yeah, you should back. probably tell me to throw it all up at some point. You know. This might be I don't a good know time for the. A the training thing is not Always very good at responding to what you're doing. Nobody likes a low flying duck. All right, let's go ahead and throttle back up. Now? <laughs> Should have done that when I was close to stalling right there. There you go. Speed is increasing, and as long as we maintain the same attitude, our altitude will keep climbing too. You're really getting the hang of your controls. Before long, you won't even need a co-pilot. I mean, as long as Until the training then, isn't too messed up radio, in Flight Sim 10, the training sometimes plane, just didn't I'll even work here. out right. You can pass me the controls when you're ready to finish your session, or keep flying. It is a great day after all. Uh, yeah, we might as well move on to the next thing. Uh, delegate controls. Alright, I have control. Good job. Okay, check. Okay, next training. Partly I'm just seeing whether it's possible for my computer to record this while I'm playing it. After all, the game is using maybe 70% of my CPU. It varies. Depends on whether it's loading stuff or not. I've got an i7-4790K running at 4 GHz, 32 gigs of RAM, and uh, RTX 2070. And uh, it's using about 8 gigs of my memory, and it's using as much of my CPU as it can. Uh, the recording software is using about 12% right now. Outside, you can see the I think uh, the, here, my, uh, oh, uh, and it looks like the recording software is having trouble now. A decent rate of speed. This is the cruise attitude. Okay, I think it's loaded stuff now, and uh, it's using less CPU. Okay, f control one. Take a look at the attitude indicator. As the name implies, it shows your current attitude. The white line is the horizon, with the sky above and the ground below. That okay. orange element in the middle, aligned with the horizon, that's your plane. Just like we saw outside, our current attitude reads pretty much straight and level. All right. Okay, now let's see how much power the engine's generating. Check your tachometer. Looks like we're pushing around 2300 okay, well, revolutions per minute. Uh, Combined, oh, there. Attitude yeah. and engine RPMs translate to aircraft I mean, performance. Let's just go back out here. Don't focus me on those Which instruments if it's not what you indicator. want me to look at. Speed. Now, last but not least, check your altimeter. To figure out your altitude, you always want to read the small needle first. That's how many thousands of feet up you are. Then on to the big needle for the hundreds. With our current attitude and power output, we're holding a speed of 90 knots and a stable altitude of 6,000 feet. But that's about to change. Take the stick when you're ready. Uh, okay, uh, just taking a look around. Pull back slightly on the yoke to raise the nose just above the horizon line. About two inches. Inches? Give Make me sure degrees. Don't too much, or the angle will be too steep to create lift. And without enough lift, we'll stall. All right, go full throttle and stall. 
start climbing. I am at full throttle Welcome and I am climb climbing. Attitude. See how it shows up on your attitude indicator and tachometer? According to your altimeter, we're gaining altitude. Let me just trip up. But we're losing airspeed even at full throttle, proving you can't avoid basic physics while making a climb. Okay, before we go on, let's get back to a cruise attitude. Okay. Ease up on the yoke and aim your nose just below the horizon. Ease then down on the yoke. throttle back down to 2300 RPMs. Okay, scroll down. Uh, 2300, just below the horizon. And I'm just using elevator trim right now instead of actually turning the stick. Nice job. We're now set up with the same attitude and power we had at the top of our lesson. If you take a look outside, you can see how our attitudes changed, but you can also check your instruments for the details. A little dirt roads, too. As a general rule, you always want to keep your turns under 30 degrees. Well, under 30 degrees. I was a little bit vigorous on the previous there's one. There's a series of notches representing 10 degrees each. Use them to control your roll. Notice the more you turn, the more you need to pull back on the yoke to maintain altitude. When you're rolling out, you'll need to do the opposite. Roll and push at the same time. The more you know about the main attitudes of flight, the closer you get to that pilot state of mind. So keep practicing, and whenever you're done, pass me the controls. Okay, we are done with this one. Thanks, I've got control now. Well done. Okay. Take off and level flight. I always tend to climb underpowered. I don't do very optimal climbs. I really should work on that. Okay, ready to fly? They could have done it at a variety of airports, you know. There's an old saying I like. A mile of road will take you a mile. A mile oh, of runway it's still loading stuff. will take you anywhere. Taking off isn't hard, but there are a few key it's points still to remember. Stuff, so the recording First, is choppy. We always take off into the wind, which won't be an issue okay, I think on a it's calm day like now. today. Second, Not bad though, we enter considering runway, the visual we quality. Make sure it's clear. And I think it was loading those planes over there and such. Let's see. Okay. Um, Everything looks good. No. I cross think she didn't actually want me to. Okay, I'm in position. The rudder pedals should make steering the plane pretty easy. Yeah, I did that. All right, let's do this. Apply full power, and I'll walk you through the takeoff as we go. Okay, maybe we're good now. Use your rudders to stay on the center line, and keep pushing power until you reach 55 knots. Pedals would make this now easier. Gently pull back on the yoke. Uh, okay. Line up the Whoa. top of your instrument panel so it's a couple inches above the horizon. That'll pitch us up and set a good climb attitude. And we're airborne. Or just trim. Focus on flying straight. Use your rudders to keep the runway heading of 210 degrees. Maintain 75 well, knots. Well, it looked like there was more 220 actually. 5,500 feet in no time. Okay, uh, speed up, speed up. I'm doing the steep climb thing again. First step here is adjusting our attitude. She hasn't taught Here's us about elevator trim. I'm cheating. Max power. To stay level at our target altitude, let's start by easing the throttle back to 1800 RPMs. 1800 is quite low. You probably noticed, to maintain altitude, you need to pitch the nose up. You could just keep pulling on the yoke to hold steady, but that's not really a precise means of control. Ah, here we go. Probably better to adjust your trim wheel until you don't need to push trim wheel. or pull on the yoke. Drag the trim down when you need to set so the So I've got up. my trim Drag on the hat switch on the, the joystick, down. of course. Try adding trim to keep us at 5,500 feet without increasing throttle. If you feel our pitch slipping and need to get back to the proper attitude, don't worry. 1800 just pull on the yoke, really low, but... then dial in the right trim. 
The way I was taught, when you adjust the trim, you make rough changes at first to remove pressure on the yoke. Then small adjustments to find the perfect setting to keep your desired attitude. That's the key to straight and level flight. It saves you from constantly pushing or pulling on the yoke. And that gives you more time to enjoy the ride. If you want more practice using the trim, go for it. Whenever you're ready to pass the controls, I'll be here. Well, I haven't quite got it where it needs to be yet. The trim is actually a little bit finer than I'm used to, but where is actually a trim knob? Oh, here, the trim wheel's here. I mean, at uh, 1800 RPM, we're barely going fast enough for level flight here. It's actually a little bit dodgy. But anyway, that's level. We're not at 5,500, but she seems satisfied, so. Oh, wait, it's not quite level. It's going down again. Trim more. Um, yeah, I got the idea. All right, let's delegate. Okay, I have control. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. All right. Uh, if you say so. Landing. The fun part. Today, you're in charge of bringing us in for a safe landing. Okay. Looks We've like it's loaded for stuff. A in approach, so we don't have to Looks like loading the premium pattern. airports or the really fancy airports is a lot tougher than just loading the general landscape. With 10 degrees of flaps and idle power. We're on the glide slope now. Maintain speed around 65 knots. Change your pitch if you need to and keep your aim point on the runway number. When you're targeting the runway number, you want to keep it steady in your sights. Oh, where are we? Oh, it's all the way down there. Whoa. If it looks like the number's moving up in your windscreen, you're We're way high. Up. They started me this high? You'll need to add a bit more throttle to get back on I the I don't slope. need any throttle at this rate. If it looks like the number's moving down in your windscreen, well, then you're too high. We're way high. You'll I can see it from the Pappy lights. You might have wanted descent, to mention those, too. But you'll too. also need to push forward and trim to change your attitude and maintain the same speed. I need to trim down quite a lot. Uh, we don't need to extend flaps just yet. It's not safe. <laughs> um, are we gonna go around? <laughs> this is... Uh, maybe I can force it, but we're really high. Keep your aim point on the runway threshold. When you're 10 feet above the runway, it's time to flare. Once we pass the threshold, okay, got shift some your flaps. aim point to the end of the runway. Then, pull back slightly on the yoke to aim the nose just above it. I think I overcompensated on the height, but... Okay, we're past the threshold. Start the flare. Oh, uh, we're not at the... Slowly. He didn't set me Let up right! Settle onto the runway. Don't push it down, but don't let it start climbing. Screw you, I'm landing. <laughs> nice. Now apply the brakes to slow us down and bring the plane to a stop. Oh, num delete? Number pad delete is the brakes. I thought B would be the brakes, but apparently not. I don't feel like it's breaking. Is sure numpad delete? There's some creaking. That's fancy. I don't think she likes this. <laughs> okay, numpad delete is not working. No, no, I'm gonna crash into a car! Can we crash it? Oh, we can. Cause, oh, they don't explode me. Um, hold on, let me check the control for brakes because it didn't seem to be applying brakes when I pressed the numpad delete. Oh, there's also uh, left brake and right brake and obviously parking brakes is a thing. What's B right now? 
altimeter. Um, let's do control V for that. Hopefully that'll apply both, and then if I need a differential, I'll do those. But uh, that's weird too, using the numpad for that. Okay. Um, my joystick could do with some other functions. I could put it on the trigger. It's not like there's anything that's using weapons in here right now. Um, no, not a sign. All. And uh, initially, uh, it didn't have a configuration for my joystick, so make sure that the filter is set to all to even see these, otherwise you won't. Okay, we'll see if that works better. Uh, apply and save. Okay, we are way high, so stop talking, we need to pitch down immediately. And you can see how high they start us out. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, it's still using a lot of CPUs, so it might be choppy for you. Ooh. I've idled the engine. And I've already set us up in landing configuration. At this is so high. We're on the glide slope now. Maintain speed around 65 knots. Change your pitch If we maintain 65 knots starting out like that, number. there's no way we would make when the runway properly. The runway number, you want to keep it steady in your sights. If it looks like I think the numbers will be okay up like in this. your windscreen, you're coming in low. You'll need to add a bit more I need a lot more trim down. If it looks like the number's moving down in your windscreen, well, then you're too high. You'll need to add flaps to increase your rate okay, of Okay, that feels a little bit better. But you'll also need to push forward and trim to change your attitude and maintain the same speed. Okay, flaps. Oh, that's not flaps. <laughs> that's the control for X-Plane 11. Okay, we're past the threshold. Start the flare. Keep pulling back slowly. Let the plane settle onto the runway. Don't push it down, but don't let it start climbing. It'll be fine. Don't panic. There we go. Nice. Now apply the brakes. I'm to applying the brakes. And bring the plane to a stop. Okay, I think the brakes worked properly this time. Great job. As they say, any landing you can walk away from is a good landing. But if you can use the plane the next day, it's outstanding. Landings can be hard, even for seasoned pilots. Trust me, don't hesitate to practice. After all, that's what we're here for, right? Okay, so that's done. Traffic pattern! Yep. Okay, things look a little bit more balanced. All right, so uh, parking brakes. Let me get the cursor out of the way. Pedals would make the rudder control a little bit smoother in this case, I think, but twisting my wrist isn't exactly the finest tuned thing ever. Okay, well, um, I guess we reach we'll altitude, turn. You're gonna start turning left 90 degrees toward a 122 degree heading. Okay, we're in the pattern. Get ready to enter the crosswind section. Good, keep going till you reach the traffic pattern altitude of 5,700 feet. Ready to make your left turn downwind? When the runway appears at the halfway point of your wing strut, you'll know you're at a good glide distance. Uh, it's a bit choppy right now. We've got the wind at our back now. We're on the right track. Lower your nose to a cruise attitude and reduce power to 2100 RPMs. Once your speed is in the white arc, add 10 degrees of flaps to prep us for landing. 
Now's not a bad time to check if the runway is looking good. Now's a great time. And yeah, it looks it great. It goes without saying, always watch out for other planes entering or exiting the pattern. Okay, flaps. We're gonna fly past the end of the runway here. Keep going until you see it at a 45 degree angle behind you. That's your cue to turn left again onto the base leg. Really? I don't think that's enough space, but okay, whatever. Uh, let's say 45 degrees is like that, and we're just going for the threshold. Make sure we don't crash into any mountains along the way. I hope there are going to be other missions or stuff. All right, reduce power okay, to idle well, it's to telling me to do it. Altitude and maintain idle. Attitude. There we go. The runway's in full view. Make sure to keep the plane centered on approach. If you're too high, add flaps. Too low, add power to maintain the glide path. Yeah, I could do some work on landings. Come on, go down. Okay. Interesting landing sounds. Alright, break. I think she wants me to come to a Wait complete a stop landing. here. Now just apply the brakes to slow your roll. And make sure you don't stop on the runway, of course. Well... <laughs> if Wait, other planes could... are looking to land, we've got to move. Take one of the taxiways on the right. I could have taken that taxiway if I thought you were going to respond properly. I think can totally U-turn on a runway. Good job. As an old instructor said to me, not only did you not die, you're really learning to fly. Like the vehicles around. And they're collidable. First solo flight. Let's get to it. It's time. Your first solo flight. I'll be watching from the ground in radio contact if you need me. But something tells me you won't. Your goal is to complete Sedona's left hand traffic pattern on your own. Yeah, sorry. This is a little bit choppy because it's still loading the Sedona uh, airport scenery here. Well, we are off the ground, and I think, well, the CPU is getting too balanced. Seems like Flight Sim is only a little bit more uh, more intense on the CPU than X-Plane 11, but that's X-Plane 11 with all the photo scenery and such. Of course, given the visual quality of Flight Sim, that's pretty good. It's getting a little bit dark in here. I like the flashlight function. <laughs> There's a flashlight. I like that. That's handy. I'm gonna keep the flashlight on. Okay, let's turn. That was a more vigorous turn than would be allowed, I think. Okay, probably time to do it. Okay, and... And... <laughs> oh, it doesn't want to go down, no. Well, there's plenty of room. Alright. Brakes. Uh, I'll go for the next taxiway. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> improvement that's life right but you did it all in your I own. swear I was testing how badly I could do without it failing I swear <laughs> okay so uh, navigation okay I think it's okay now all right uh, right so 
uh, do I start the stopwatch or I guess we'll just take off. She didn't say anything about starting the stopwatch. Above the airport? Wait, what? Okay, well, it's got a little marker there. Alright, whatever. Just follow the little marker. Ooh, choppy again. Oh, is it reloading stuff at the airport? Come on, we just loaded that stuff. Stop that. Just keep it loaded for a while. So we're overflying the airport, huh? Well, I guess that makes sense to, I mean, if we're using... Well, she hasn't told us how we're navigating exactly. It looks like just by heading in the estimated times rather than using, like, a VOR DME sort of deal. Well, maybe a VOR but not a DME. I don't know. I like how the propellers are. Oh, one last bit of departure prep. We need to validate the time. That's a fancy way of saying, start the clock. Okay, so, start the clock. I think that's what she meant, right? Yeah? On the nav log, you can see our next waypoint, Munns Park. Is it a 41 degree heading about five minutes away? Okay. Navigating is basically flying a given heading for a given amount of time. Sometimes you deviate, but if you track the time flown from your last known position, You'll always have at least a range for your current position. Oh, that car is driving in the middle of those houses. That's not right. We all know speed can increase or decrease depending on the wind. That's why at your next waypoint you'll want to compare your estimated time en route with the actual time flown. Validate your estimate and your progress. Well, I'm gonna go as fast as I can, darn it. Like, she's talking about navigation, but she didn't tell us how the heck we got these headings. Or... How we might navigate without being handed the stuff. This isn't really navigation right now. <laughs> I mean... Also, she said 5,800 feet that we were gonna stick at. This seems a bit low over that terrain, doesn't it? I mean, I don't want to go 5,800. Screw it. <laughs> that looks like I'm going to crash into that stuff. Yeah, I definitely consider 5,800 maybe a bit too low. Because I'm at 6,250. I wonder if they've got redwoods that look like redwoods. I'm going to have to check that out. I doubt it, but, you know. Looks like we might be a little bit late because I climbed more. Interesting stuff. I follow roads. Where's our highway? I mean, going to the airport could be easy for highway. There's a highway over there. Can I follow the highway? Is that the highway I'm supposed to follow? You didn't tell me which highway. These are sort of different trees. 
conifers. Time really flies when you're following a highway. Can you go in external view? Yeah. We've got all the things. I need to figure out how to hide all that stuff though if I want to take cinematics or anything. So I'm not to pan the camera yet. Just rotate it. I don't know if it's really acknowledging that I'm following the highway or not. Maybe I have to get there before it'll check that off or... So here's our little Cessna. I'm sure people watching have seen a whole bunch of videos on Flight Sim already so... Nothing too surprising about the look of it. I'd like to pan the camera down though. Honestly, I thought this navigation tutorial was a little bit less informative than it needed to be. Navigation's sort of a bigger thing after all. Perhaps having a different plane, since we already did the solo flight, would have been useful to get a broader array of navigation Flagstaff stuff. Okay, there we go. Space. Next step is setting up to enter the traffic pattern. We've got clearance to enter the downwind leg and land on runway 21. Keep your attitude, then follow the standard pattern. I mean, of course, they could have more than one navigation tutorial. That might work. But... You know, there's all sorts of navigation oh, stuff to learn. And, reduce your power. and certainly the ones in FSX were more detailed. You had full ILS approach kind of thing. Uh, gonna ignore that for now. Yeah, bandwidth. That's gonna be an issue, isn't it? Power should be at idle now, so you're losing altitude while maintaining cruise attitude. Uh, final turn is, like, where? <laughs> I wish you had told me a little bit more about this airport ahead of time. You know. Insofar as navigation is about preparation, I don't feel like we were properly prepared on all the things. Well, I see an airport there. I don't think it expected me to be this low. Yep, I think I was too low for that marker. Maybe I'm not even supposed to be landing on this runway, I don't even know. I really need to check what would actually consist of, like, wrecking the plane. Really supposed to land there. Oh. It's well done. Don't get me wrong. Just not what was expected. At this point, I think it's probably best if we start the lesson over. Gosh darn it! No, I'm, I'm no. I wasn't supposed to land there. Oh, I have failed. I think I've had enough though. <laughs> I think I've had enough of the training. Let's see, how far do we get? Okay, so there's, there's activities though. Okay, so there's activities, that's the thing. So, um, after this navigation is just solo navigation, I don't think um, they're telling me what I was most interested to know. Anyway, what other activities do we have here? Landing challenges and bush trips. Okay, well, Maybe there'll be other things added later. I don't know. Anyway, so that's enough for me. I think uh, that's just a look at the flight training in in the game. I'll I'll do other flights pretty soon. So, but I was mainly testing whether I could 
record at all while playing the game and well uh, you'll see the results so with that thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time